Hey guys, Nate and Scott here with PlayYourCourt.com. Today we're talking about why Scott Slice backhand sucks. Standing right here, you know I can. It's hear, actually not the title, I but I can hear you, right? Whatever. All right, guys. Today we're talking about the slice backhand and apparently how mine uh, sucks a little bit. Rude. Bit. This video is for players with a player court rating of 70 and up, a little bit higher level, and we don't talk about slice a lot, so today we're going to dive in and, and talk about some, some backhand slice instruction. We're going to show you some exercises that are critical in developing the slice. It's, it, it, they're all exercises that we use with our students um, when we're really just trying to make this slice offensive. You know, as, as you know, the best, best offense is a good defense, That's and right. this defense is where slice... Defense ball games. Uh, you got it. So this is where this slice comes in. All right. And, and to Scotty's credit, Scott's got a great two-handed backhand. You're just not in a situation to where you want to hit the slice a whole lot. It's a see good that, two-handed. See that backhand in combination? He's got a great two-handed backhand. Backhand it. Dot, 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 yeah. but a slice backhand is garbage. Let's jump into the first exercise, guys. All right, here's the before footage of Scott's backhand. And just a couple things to note. What we're going to be focusing on fix, fixing is primarily this take back. The take back um, is relatively shallow, and we're going to focus on getting it much higher uh, and using incorporating that left hand a whole lot more. And then we're going to focus on the weight transfer, really getting the, the racket um, out to the ball and leaning into the ball, getting out to that right foot, um, and really working on the finish as well. Uh, as you can see here, Scott's got a tendency to chop down, and we really want him going through the ball. Uh, so we're going to address these things with a few exercises, and by the end of this thing, Scott's going to have a, a pretty darn good slice backhand. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is the joint position in Scott's take back. Partly what's happening is he's, he's in a good position with the elbow, but he's just not getting the racket rotated enough. We want this racket up by the ear, all right? You can tell here the butt cap, and this is kind of where you want to be, right? We want to see this butt cap parallel with the baseline. We want it around, back around the head. Because what happens now is he's creating a lot of torque, and this is what's going to enable him to get into kind of where, we, you know, the kind of grip referred to it as the chopper grip. It's going to feel like a chopper because he's letting it get to extension, and then the wrists will start to come through, all right? So we're working with a lot more torque. This is a big adjustment too, guys. So, sorry to interrupt Yo, you. But for me, like I can see this in my students, but I didn't realize until Nate pointed it out, like my slice backhand has never had a whole lot of bite to it. I never got the same rotation from my hips and shoulders as I get from my two-hander. And now, even as you do it right now, it's like, man, I was never anywhere close to here. I'm here just kind of arming the ball. I'm not getting the use out of that core that I wanted. Yeah, and, and something to note there, like as he's shadowing it, it's important. Go ahead and set back up for me, bud. Um, if his elbow drops, this changes, right? Now he's decapitating the ball. Yeah, he's getting too up. far under the ball. And we gotta be really mindful of that because we're not necessarily chopping the ball. I know the continental grips referred to as the chopper grip, but we're not really chopping it. We're going through, but I think that's more of an issue with transferring the weight. I think it feels a lot more natural when we get Scott going through the court. All right, and so we're gonna talk about the transfer in the weight in a moment. First, we're gonna really incorporate this mechanism of a releasing from this higher point out to the court. And we're just gonna use a tool that we have here at the club. You can use a Frisbee or whatever else. Dishes at your house. <laughs> that's right. So that's, your wife would be furious. Yeah, yeah, anything sort of flat that you can fling. We just use this with the kids for, for volleys, right? Like they, they put it on their hand, they volley. Happens to go through the air pretty, pretty good as well. So here, can I, I'll trade you. You give me yeah, a racket, I'll give you this. Absolutely. So here, all we're gonna do is get Scott to set up as if he's throwing a Frisbee. So what you'll do see you here- up high as if I'm hitting that slice back in? Yeah, same? yeah right. so it's loaded up and he's gonna transfer his weight to release, right? So he gets it moving, all right? That, that's, that's the goal, That's the right? feel, yeah. Yeah, that's the feel. So it's a fun way to, to initially start incorporating it. You might have just improved my frisbee throw too because I start my frisbee throw right here and I can't throw it as far as everybody else. The same problem probably. I need to be coiling yeah. more. You're going to receive two invoices. That's right. All right, here we're addressing that weight transfer that we mentioned. Now that we've got the take back and the swing path corrected, now we're looking at the swing path and this is just a great exercise by loading out on that front knee. He can really focus on the path of the racket 
And because he's so close to the ground, he's not allowing the rocket to dip down too low. So we're like we were talking about where you, you can chop and get under the ball and, and float the ball without and, and end up losing that bite. Now the swing path has parameters in which it operates on. And being down on that knee, he can really feel himself leaning into the ball, creating that biting slice. All right, so, so far so good, but as you can see in the footage below, Scott's still running into problems with over-rotating. All right, so the rocket position is really good. The weight transfer is good. He's going through the ball. He's finishing high, but there's a problem with the left arm. And what's happening is, is Scott's hitting the slice. He's not anchoring the left, so he's coming through but then the left arm is coming around and it's causing this over rotation. So now what we're talking about, Scotty, it, it, when you go through that motion, what we're talking about is really anchoring this left arms and he's pinching the back here. He's gonna focus that scapular muscle, that, well, the scapular, Almost is it like a muscle? a referee saying, uh, safe. Yeah, there you yeah. go. All right. You just created that, good yeah. job. All right, but he's pinching the scapular, right? He's getting his back to really feel this pinch all right, and this is going to anchor the back arm and improve it. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the final product. And hey, maybe the backhand. Maybe my slice backhand won't suck anymore. Maybe. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so in this final progression, uh, I asked Scott to hit the slice backhand down the line because this is gonna really help him keep the ball on the side of his body and anchor that back arm. And after a few of these, he redirected cross court and you can see just a big improvement getting a lot more bite on the ball a lot more depth uh, and really getting that ball to bite All right, big takeaways, guys. We have four of them. First, maybe most importantly, is get the racket up high. All right, really load that up. Yeah, Ooh, we synchronized there. Yeah. All right, number two, all right, is the weight transfer. Make sure as a righty, you're going from that left foot to the right foot. You're stepping into it as a lefty, right to left. Number three goes along with the weight transfer. You're going through the ball. You are not chopping, all right? Number four, finish high and anchor the non-dominant arm to keep that ball on the side of your body. Safe. Safe, you got it, man. Great stuff here, guys. It definitely helped my slice backhand. As always, we just want to see you improve your tennis game. And at Play Your Court, there's actually two ways we do that for you. If you're in the United States, we have an Uber for Tennis Lessons model where we actually send tennis coaches to your local court. We're the biggest tennis lesson provider in the entire country. Over 2,000 coaches and I always talk about this membership. A lot of people don't know we've been offering lessons all over the country for 10 years. Also, if you can't afford lessons, no big deal. For six bucks a month, we connect you in our community where you can meet other local players if you need practice and matches. And that's where you'll get some video instruction from Nate and I as well. So check out uh, playercourt.com. Take a look at all the things we have to offer. We'd love to help you improve your tennis game. See you soon.